This is Larry the Barber Man. I'm here at Raw Image Barbers here in Aylesbury with none other than Kieran the Barber. Yep. I'm just here to have a quick catch up with Kieran because uh, if you watch this YouTube channel, you know last time I interviewed Kieran, he was an employee of Baldy's Barbers. Mm. He's now gone it alone and he has this barber shop, Raw Image Barber Shop, which is within a gym complex or yep. gymnasium. Yeah. And I'm just going to have a nice little catch up with Kieran to see where he's at. So, Kieran, now you are a shop owner. Tell me a little bit about the uh, shop Raw Image and what you're doing here that's different from what you may have done at Baldi's. Okay, so it's, um, I'd say it's in a gym. I wanted to be very different with it. I wanted a different approach to how barbering was. I think gym and barbering go very hand in hand at the minute. Men are very, they care a lot about how they look, how they feel. Um, and I've brought a lot of business in from the gym. So they say they're going out, they're going for a workout and then they're coming in afterwards um, and they're getting a haircut, which is, which is brilliant for me. Like I, <laughs> it's awesome for me. Also, um, I've been doing walk-ins for the last 15 years as a barber. For the last 10 weeks, I've been doing appointments, appointments only. Right. Um, man, that works. That really, really works. You'd be, you'd be absolutely shocked. The amount of people who come in here and go, why have you not done this like years ago? Because men now don't want to sit in a barber shop for two, three hours, etc., etc. They're very, as you say, it's, no one has patience these days. No one has patience. It's a, it's a not given thing anymore. So they can come in, bang. They book at one o'clock, they come in five to one. Within five minutes, they're in the chair. They know they're in the chair, they know they're out by half one. They haven't got their missus down their ears, you know what I mean, saying, where are you, what are you doing? Because they're not waiting around. They're in, they're out, they get on with the rest of their day, go spend it with their family, go back to work. You can get a haircut in a lunch break now. Okay, so I guess the, what you're saying is that uh, nowadays people are kind of cash rich and time poor and that's kind of yes. uh, helped. Very much so, very much so. In a sense of, as you say, I've also got an online booking, booking system um, with a, a guy called Nearcut. Amazing. If you want to you book a haircut at two in the morning, you can book a haircut at two in the morning. Doesn't disturb me. It's an online booking system. I know a lot of people do use the phone or their mobiles and they've got a little notepad or whatever, but it doesn't work for, because if I'm cutting hair all day and I've got 20 clients in, and I'm on the phone, I'm still booking in appointments, it doesn't work. Uh, I can do a haircut, I walk over to my desk, take what I need to, refresh the computer, and I'll see, okay, that guy's booked in, that guy's cancelled, that guy's moved his appointment, all in the time of me doing a haircut, instead of me answering three or four phone calls. The online booking system is, is an amazing thing. That kind of makes sense. I suppose that, but that's going to be very different from how it was in Baldi's, because Baldi's was kind of like a walk-in and Baldy and yourself had like a double act going on. Yeah, I, I know, I know, like, I, man, I miss that. I, yeah, yeah, I miss that. I miss that you would, you would walk in, I would always walk in half an hour late, you know, because didn't have appointments, it was walking, so you just sort of did what you needed to. And you would put on a show. It wasn't just um, in Baldy's, as Baldy's run it for the last 20 years, he puts on a show for you, which is awesome. And it works, for, that works for him. And it's really good. Um, people come in and they don't mind waiting a couple of hours because, as you say, you're getting the banter, you're getting the laughs. Um, but with my customers, because I, w I was building up a queue in Baldi's where it would just be me and there would be nine or ten people solely waiting for me. And I couldn't go, they go, oh, Kieran, can I come back in half an hour? Or I'll go, no, you can't. Like, you leave, you, you lose your space. So everyone's like, why don't you do appointments? Why don't you do you need to do appointments? Get on the appointments. Uh, it just rattled me, so everyone was saying it, so I went and did it. And, and for me at the minute, in 10 weeks in, I, I couldn't ask for anything better. It works perfect. Okay, perfect. So, talking about double acts, uh, you are a double act with Baldy. Uh, since we last spoke, you've gone on to become an official educator for the Andis company, yeah. where you, both you and Baldy act as a double act for that particular gig. Tell me a little bit about this gig with Andis and also your partnership with Baldy in, within this gig. Okay. 
Um, we, me with Andis, we, um, I'm an international educator for them. So I travel the world and I go teach their clippers. What happened was um, we did a photo shoot with them and they sent us some clippers to try out. I absolutely fell in love with them. It was something I'd never had before, I'd never tried before. Um, I got a sample of the US Pros, the Fades, um, the D8s, which is the Slimline Pro Allies, and I absolutely fell in love with them. It's, I'm one of these people, I can't, not sell a product as such, but I can't advise people on a product that I don't like. I've, it's in my heart, I'm very, you know me Larry, I'm a real passionate guy, like, I can't lie to people, I can't go, that's a really good product, you should try that, and it's not. Like, I, and this for me, hands down, within the next four or five years, will slowly take over the market. I can, I can put money on that. I think it's a lot sooner than, yeah, that's besides the point. I think it's gonna happen a lot sooner than that with, obviously, the advent of, well, not advent, the, them bringing out the T-Outliner with yeah. the UK plug. I've just been to see Josh LaMonica. We just did a review on the Pro Alloy. Pro uh, Alloy is amazing. I have it right there behind yeah. me. It's, it's I mean, he gave it a nine and a half out of 10. There's another well-known brand with a similar design. Yep. I'm not going to say names, and every barber gave that kind of like a 10. And, you know, by all accounts, the Pro Alloy is right up there with that. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. It's, it's slowly, it, do you know what it is? It's, it's getting that market and going, this is something new. And it's, it's unknown to people because people don't know what it is. It's like driving a new car, isn't it? You, you're getting this new car and even though it looks nice and it feels nice, you'll still for the first few weeks go, oh, I'm not used to this yet. I don't know why it's going so fast or why the clutch is doing this. But that's the same with clippers. You'll pick up these clippers, you go, well, they're a little bit heavier or they're a little bit lighter, they're a bit more powerful. I'm not used to that yet. But as soon as, you, as, soon as I got used to it, I, I fell in love with them. Yeah. You know what springs to mind when you said that? The Fade Master. Because so many people used to buy the Fade Master, which is an American clipper. No need to do that now because obviously the range of English clippers are really good. Yeah. And they would buy it on the name but they couldn't handle the surgical blade. And, and, it, would, and it would catch and etc. Yeah, etc. Yeah. Et if it is. Why, why you sent me a pair of dodgy clippers where they're not, they're catching, they're making my clients bleed. It's not in, not in a horrible way, it's because you didn't know how to use them as such. You have to use them on the slight corner and you have to edge it round. That's softly and safely the way you do it. If you're just going in, because it's such a flat blade, you'll be cutting people. And you have to literally just keep the blade flat on the client's skull. Flat on the head, yeah. And it's for, it, you've got to have a certain cutting style for that. I mean, you're, you're kind of, your flickers couldn't, do it, but no. you kind of slow methodical it's, it's a, cutters. It's a slow circular yeah. motion, yeah. which which brings it out. Yeah. Um, but is it, that's, that's again, it's people getting used to that. And as soon as they've got used to it and it clicks in their head, it is like riding a bike, you never ever forget it. I remember using the, the Andis fades, the gold ones, the English plug, for the first time. And I went straight, I f it was Boldy. I cut Boldy with him. Boldy was like, oh, go on and try him out on me. And I went into the back of his neck and I cut all of his tattoo. Like, literally cut it and he was bleeding. I was like, um, these are these are crap. Like <laughs> these are rubbish. Why why have they just done that? And then I watched the Dave Diggs Fade 101 DVD. Oh my God, that man! He's amazing with clippers. He's a genius. Um, and he said use use just the three corners of it and come on. And I I hadn't used them and I picked them up and I did it. My fades perfect. And I tell you what I've even done. I've got the cordless US Pros because I love tampering. So I've got the cordless US Pros and I put the fade head on them as well. That's all I need to say. Anders, if you're listening. Okay. <laughs> that's, um, <laughs> that's the next thing. So that's your job as a, uh, you're an educator for the Andis company. Tell me a little bit about your travels and what your remit is for the Andis okay. company as an educator. So and we, where you've been and we where do, you're going. We do six or seven shows a year all, all around the world. Um, this year I was lucky enough, that, I mean, we did a lot of shows in England this year. So we do Wales, um, London, Edinburgh in a few weeks. Um, and the big one was we got to spend a week out in New York, which was out, it was amazing, out of this world. That was in March, you was there. <laughs> um, New York was out of this world. And, you know, I'm blessed to say that I'm with Andis. And it was like winning family fortunes. 
like it was this this gig where I got to go work but do something I love in a place that I've never been to it was like winning a holiday even though we didn't get to really see much but you was there and you was in the mix of everything I got to meet all these celebrity barbers who I absolutely idolized like Rob the original um, Kenny and everyone like that and Danny um, and I love them you know what I mean they're like the guys that I idolize and everyone wants to meet them and I got a chance to actually be on stage and work with them which was it was mind-blowing well, that's a testament to what you've actually worked up to uh, via the education that you've given on your uh, Instagram channel yeah uh, also you've got a YouTube channel where you're educating through that to obviously benefit your followers yeah. Tell us a little bit about your uh, YouTube channel and what you do on there and what benefit it will actually be to barbers. Okay, so I do probably a video once every four weeks. Um, I try and listen to my um, subscribers and listen to the people who comment, say, try this video, try doing this haircut next, try doing this beard trim next. What you, can you teach me how to style this, style that? Um, I've just taken an apprentice um, at Richmond and he come in and I said so how how did you start cutting hair and he said uh, Richmond how long have you been cutting hair for since you were what 13? 12, 13. I said how did you start and he goes well I watched YouTube. I was like what? Yeah just used to him and his brother used to guy each other's hair but they used to watch YouTube while they were doing it. I used to watch your YouTube and I used to learn from that and to me that means a lot because now he's sitting in my barbershop he's cutting hair for me and he learned by watching me and other great guys who cut hair, which is, which is amazing. You know, my channel is there to teach people. I'm not here to um, say that it's the right way or the wrong way. It's to say it's my way. And if you can take one or two things from the video and go, oh, I'd like to try it that way, then my job is done and I'm, I'm a happy man. Okay, so primarily you're teaching them clipper techniques using all the Andish range of clippers. Yeah. You're also now a brand ambassador for Johnny's Chop Shop range as well. Yeah. You kind of implementing that. That, that fell into place in, I got, and, and I'm not going to mention any other brands, um, but I got sent a lot of brand stuff when I set up this shop. I messaged a lot of people and I said, could you send me some free samples? Um, I'd really like to try your product um, and there's potential of me taking it on board. Um, and I got sent a few products and this one company which I'm not going to mention any names offered me the absolute world they went we're going to give you this and we're going to take you here we're going to teach you rah, 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 rah. Um, and I just didn't like their product it wasn't for me um, no <laughs> it wasn't for me um, I didn't want to be in their crew as such <laughs> um, which, which is each to their own, they're, they're sort of their price up um, and their products are very wet, um, they're quite oil based and the product that I wanted to go for, I, I needed it to be dry. The styles at, at, at the minute are very natural, the, the crops are very natural, the, the pumps are very natural. Um, I say when I went over to New York everything was slick, it was very, um, Layrite is an amazing product, absolutely amazing product and over in America Layrite is perfect. Same with like Rusal and stuff like that. Over in America, that's perfect. But for me, because it's so um, oil-based, not my clients. That's not my client base. My clients like um, like the clays, the really dry clays, the powders, um, and that's what Johnny's Chop Shop offered me was a real dry look. But the smell of it, you get that real sort of masculine quite smell from it as well. Um, and their range is really cool. You've got like the hobo hair. Um, which is the first dry man shampoo. Dry man shampoo. Yeah, so man's dry shampoo, that <laughs> kind of thing. So, you know, if you're going on a night out, Friday, you finish work, you've got a bit of grease in your hair, just spray that hobo hair in. It makes it smell really nice. It, it dries your hair out, cleans it. Yeah, go on. The hobo. So, yeah, no, hobo hair is an absolutely amazing product. It, it works really well. As I say, if you're going out on a Friday night, you've got greasy hair, Spray a bit of hobo hair in there, um, run it through, and it cleans your hair. It makes it nice and dry again. It sort of, it has a slight talc element to it, so where it takes the grease out of your hair. Um, but again, like like Andis clippers, it's a need to know basis. Men don't really know about this product yet. As women, dry shampoo is one of the most sold products on the women's section in Boots or Superdrugs. 
it's a must have in my, my missus has like two or three cans of it um, and I use it I'll, I'll get it and I'll just quickly in the morning but now I've got um, hobo hair don't need it anymore you know and it's just um, trying to advise men on this is a new thing you should give it a try and, and everyone who's taken it away goes man that's that's really good you know I've left work I've been in the gym or whatever I've sprayed a bit of that in and I've gone down the pub with my mates I don't need to sort of go home, shower out, etc., etc. So it works both on a professional basis. You use that on every haircut in this shop, and people can actually take it away and do it for self. If yeah, like. yeah. For me, if I'm especially if I'm taking a photo haircut, um, and I get a kid in who has just come from school, he hasn't really washed his hair. He's got a bit of product in there. I wet it all down. I'll cut the hair. I'll dry it. I'll spray that hobo hair in it. I'll run it all through and then it looks like he's, he's washed his hair and then I can dry it all in, reproduct it and then I can take a photo of it, you know, and that's, that's the element of it, it just brings that next level key to it and that's, it's brilliant stuff. But that's why I fell in love with Johnny's Chop Shop because it offered something different from, from everyone else and you know me, I like different, I'm, I'm that kind of goes like, no one's really using that but it's really cool, why, why aren't people using that? I'd like to use that. Um, I, I know there's, there's barbers who sort of sell stuff that they don't necessarily like. Um, and they will go out of their way just because it's, it's something that's there at the time or they've been offered an education job. Um, I'm not one of them guys, I can't do that. Um, fair, fair play to the people that do it, but I, I, can't, I, I have to sell something that I love. And it sells well because I love it. A Richmond sells it really well because he really gets along with it. Um, and there's a lot of stuff that's in the pipeline at the minute for Johnny, because I went down there on Tuesday and we got to do product testing and stuff like that. Have, have you ever done that before, product testing, by the way? Uh, just with clippers. Just with clippers and oh, stuff yeah. like that. Oh, and Kiehl's at the moment, I've kind of fallen in love with Kiehl's, the results that I get as skincare and shaving. See, now, same sort of thing. I got to go and test um, like a beard shampoo, a beard oil shampoo, but it was really cool because you got to see it without it being fragranced and you got to put your advice in on, on what, what you would like to see in there, how it would like to be. Um, there's going to be a dust out soon, which I know there is, um, there's a dust out on the market at the minute, a uh, hair powder, which is just on the shelves, but the one that I saw and I actually got to have an input in it is going to be absolutely out of this world. I can't wait to use it. And it's in such a cool packaging. I think packaging is a massive thing as well. Oh yeah, definitely. Johnny Chop Shop's got kind of like the retro kind of feel to it, which men want on their bathroom shelves. Yeah, I mean, I think Rusal have kind of proved, uh, Rusal and Layright have proved that that kind of, you know, traditional packaging works. Yeah, oh, massively. It definitely does. And I think people have had to go back to basics on, on certain things because it works. But no, so join this chop shop. I'm an ambassador in a minute um, and I love their product and it, and it will sell because it is a good product. Okay, so ultimately this uh, interview is going out to other barbers. In a nutshell, how can other barber shops benefit by Johnny's Chop Shop's range of wet products and dry? Shampoo. <laughs> so you, you, have their, you have their wet product range, you have their clay, their, pom their pomade, their hairspray, their texturizing sea salt spray, which is the best sea salt spray on the market. The, as you say, the best thing about it is it's such a wide range. It's not just six pucks and they go, that's, that's this dry clay, wet clay, slick clay, smooth clay. You know, and, and there is products like that what have certain pucks, but they all pretty much do the same thing. And it's like, come on, like you've just fragranced that different or you've just made it a little bit drier. It's the same product. So Johnny's Chop Chop have really gone out of their way to go, right, we have this product, and then on the other scale, we have this product. It's completely different. So it matches up for everyone. I sell, we, Johnny's Chop Chop have a thing called Wildcat Hair Clay. And the hair clay I pretty much use on everyone. I got, Tuesday I got 24 in. 
I have six left. It, it sells. How many, I mean, how many did we sell yesterday? It just, it flew off the shelf about seven or eight yesterday. It just sells, you know, because, and I don't need to go, you should buy this, this is a really good product. You put it in their hair and you go, you smell, have a smell of that. And they go, oh, what's that? You know, that's, that's really good. And they're looking at it and they go, do you sell that? And you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, don't even need to go, this is this, this is that. It just sells because it looks good. So basically it's a product that's in the customer space and it's just a good way to improve your bottom line without even having to sell it. Yeah. Okay. And, and the and markup on it's really, really good as well. Um, for barbers who want to buy it and the markup is really good for it. Okay, so you've spoken a lot about this uh, wet product as an exclusive product. Which clipper right now within the Andis range is giving you that similar kind of this is different, this is unusual and this is going to ultimately make my business run more efficiently. The Iron Liquors. Yeah? Yeah, the Iron Liquors without fail, they are. Where have, have you got one? Sorry, they're used, but. Okay, so these are the Andis Iron Liquors. I love them because you have your button here, your lever, which you literally can flick up and down. They're on a rotary, so they're really smooth. That is where your finger is naturally anyway, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so, they're usually a lot quieter. Sorry, it's the morning. I haven't ordered them yet. But the best thing about it is the battery. Because you get a battery with it, and you just flip that battery out, put that battery in, put this battery in charge, full charge. Absolutely amazing. It's, it's an amazing clipper. And because it, it's on a rotary, it's not on a magnet. So, I. My personal preference is always rotary. Um, just because it's so smooth on the hair, I don't end up catching the hair. It just runs straight through it. It literally... Can you do finishing hair. work with that? Because it looks like a size where you can do finishing work. What, Whereas what? typically a rotary motor is for bulk, isn't it? Um, yeah, I finish with that. I, I taper out and stuff like that. I go around the edge. I can, I can go around the edges with it and then finish with a razor, yeah. It's, it's used... That's my main clipper. I have that for everyday haircut in ones, twos, threes, and fours. And then for my fades, I'll use my sort of my US pros with my fade head on them. US pros, okay. Right, okay, yeah, yeah. So, my head. These ones here. So, they're the cordless US pros. Oh, right, cordless, yeah, okay. I'm but sorry. I've had the fade blade on them. And they run perfect. Okay, and what's your take on the pro alloys? Um, the pro alloys. Alloys. Pro alloys. Yes. Yeah, got them. Yeah. Yeah, love them. Absolutely love them. They're just if you want a nitty and gritty, and you want to say um, Afro hair or um, Asian hair where it's really thick, really coarse hair, you stick them pro alloys on. That that just comes straight off. They're just such a bulky clipper, but people might not be used to that. Um, I know there's a lot of people go, oh, they're heavy, they're heavy, but they're when you... Bulky, they're just heavy, but that's what... That's just, per yeah, it's, it's just personal use on what you're used to, because I'm used to working with a lot lighter clippers, um, and I'm used to working with the Masters, obviously, the Masters are quite heavy. Um, so when you get the Pro Alloys, I can feel the weight in them, and I'm like, oh, I, li I like them, but other people might be, that's a bit too heavy, but... When you get through the like the bulk on them, you you just you love them. You absolutely love them. And what's an undeniable fact that it is an actually a good clipper is the Slimline Pro Lie. Everybody that I've spoken to about that just gives it a it's like nine, ten, nine to ten, nine to ten. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. The, you do you know, um, the the best thing about them is they have the wide tooth blade as well. Um, some clippers don't have the wide tooth blade. They have more of a, a short tooth blade. So you can taper with them. You can finish off just um, fading with them slightly. They're an all-round clipper. And the fact that you can gap them so close and you can get so close without leaving red marks or cutting people or snagging people. Um, and the heads don't go blunt on them that quickly. Yeah. I find that when I was using other brands, the wire would go, the head would come, become blunt very quickly. Um, the motor wouldn't 
be as powerful, but with these, I've had mine for a man since I got them, so it must be about, how long they reckon they've been out? They've been out since Barber Connect last year. No, I think it was a little after that. Maybe sal well. salons. Well, you've had the black ones, but some people prefer the black ones, like Champ prefers the black the ones. The small black yeah, ones, yeah, yeah. yeah, just because they're smaller. Yeah. But I mean, I've had them, say, about a year. My pair there, personally, I've had for about a year. And they still work. I haven't changed the head on them. Um, I haven't had to change any of the wires. They charge still perfect. And they're super, super light. And, and super nimble. Yeah, they're light, they're nimble, get around the edges. They're perfect. They're, they're a perfect trimmer for what you need. I think they're, they're the best trimmer on the market. Oh yeah, no, I'd say that. I've never heard one bad complaint about them. No, Just neither have I. Pure good. Okay, so since we last spoke, you've moved on, you've got your own shop, you're uh, an official educator for Andis, you're an official ambassador for Johnny's Chop Shop. What's next for Kieran? Because you've kind of, re everything that you said in your last interview with Baldy, you've realised, so I'm just like, what's next? Um, I don't know. I, don't know. What's my, I, I need a year, a good year in business. Now, I, I set myself uh, a target. I was like, if I do this many people a day, I'll be really happy. Now, I've smashed that target already, but I'm keeping to that target, obviously. I just want to go through my first year of business and go, I did it. I did it. I did a year of business by myself. Um, and I, I can be really happy with myself, which now I look at it and I look at people are having to book a week in advance now already. Um, I said to myself, I wouldn't get an apprentice till next September. But it's been that busy. People are walking in going, please, please fit me in, please fit me in. I've had to get someone to take that custom. Luckily at Richmond, even though he's going to college in October, he said he's been cutting hair since he was 12. He's absolutely a fantastic, amazing barber. He's gonna smash it. He's gonna win Apprentice of the Year this year. You know? Watch out, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> he's, um, he's really good and he's taken all that pressure off my back already, which I didn't think I would have. Okay. I d and I'm, I'm a really humble guy. I don't. I don't go, yeah, I'm going to smash it, I'm going to do this. I'm gonna do that. I, I just set a goal and I was like, and if I beat that goal, I'm, I'm a happy man. Um, but I'll set a goal and I've, sm I've smashed that goal. So I just want a year in business and then maybe there's potential because, I mean, Anytime Fitness is the biggest chain in the UK of gyms. There's about seven in this area in Buckinghamshire alone. Maybe so they're going to franchise them out. Yeah, Raw. Yeah, yeah. Raw image. We didn't say that, but. Yeah, so what would be your advice to them? What would be the best way for them to go about this transition, would, if you like? I would definitely say try and put as much money as you can aside because you never, like me, I never knew when that day was. Um, and you never know when you're going to get an opportunity. Lucky for me, um, the manager in here, I've been cutting his hair for years. All the PTs in here, I've been cutting their hair for years. Um, I did, uh, when I went to New York, I did a body project, but I lost two stone before I went to New York, but I was in here every day, and it was slightly spoken about. So it was like, you could, you could set up a barber shop in that room, that would look really cool, that's something different, you know? And I was like, oh. Mm. Um, so, you never know when you're gonna get that opportunity. So, one. Ground. Keep keep your ear to the ground. Keep your money in your bank. Um, if you don't need to go out drinking, don't go out drinking. Put that money aside because there's many a times where you're going to get the opportunities to go out and, and have fun. I would definitely say save up and just keep your ear on the ground. Look out, look out for. Just take the opportunity when it comes because you won't regret it. Okay. I haven't regretted it. It's it's been amazing. Don't get me wrong. I miss. I miss what I had, I miss the banter, and I miss the comedy aspect, and I miss having a laugh, and, and but that will all come back in time, because I will build my own empire, where I have my own comedy, and I have my own, my own spin on things, you know, so it will come in time, um, but just as you say, save up, keep your ears to the ground. Okay, and lastly, how did it feel at the very beginning? 
when you kind of took that step and went it alone? How did it feel? Talk me about the first day through to the kind of first week, how you felt when you made that transition. Okay, so from when I handed in my notice, which was funny, because, uh, did, do you know the story of the handed in the notice story? Well, even if I don't know, I think the purpose of this interview, you need to tell us briefly. <laughs> okay, so, um, Boldy being Boldy, because he finds things funny, um, I handed in my notice, and he framed it, and he put it on the wall. That's Boldy for you. So, but as soon as I handed in my notice, it was all kind of a joke anyway. I'd handed in my notice, and it was a really nice notice, you know. I thanked him for all the, all the years that he's done for me, etc. and he, he, he framed it. And then he's like, look, this is Kieran's notice. He's leaving in a few weeks. Ha, 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 ha. You know what he's like. Um, but as soon as I handed in my notice, it was real. And that was scary. I was like, this is it now. I've got no choice. You burnt all bridge. Well, not burnt. You partially burnt the bridge behind you. Yeah, yeah, that bridge was burning. <laughs> I had to run off it. Um, I, I did some teaching, some private teaching. So I was going on my Sundays, Mondays, Tuesdays, and I was going to shops teaching to earn an extra little bit of money so I could start building this um, because I was stupid enough not to save money. But luckily, as you say, I, I am in a, I'm in a position where I can educate people and I'm in a position where I can, um, my andis and stuff like that. So I had enough funds to sort of fit this place out and, and pay off what I needed to pay off, which was awesome. And it, and it worked, but it took a long time. And it was, it was late nights in here. I mean, I was in here till two, three in the morning, fitting the floor, putting, put, painting, putting shelves up. Um, sorting everything out. Um, you don't realise how nerve-wracking owning a business is until you own a business. You think you get like with Boldies, you get paid every Saturday at four o'clock. Happy days. You go home to your family. <laughs> I'm still here five six o'clock, adding everything up in my head, putting all the sums. There's that. There's this. Telling my accountant this and that. <laughs> and you're like. This is really real now, like, you, you, there's no way of going, oh, can't I just have that wages at this on Saturday and go home to my family? You can't anymore, because you have to put in them extra hours if you want it to work. Okay, but the long and the short of it is, you climatise to being your own boss very quickly, despite the fact that there was a, a, you know, a sense of anxiety, anxiety at the very beginning, you climatise very quickly. Yeah. And, and do you know what, in, in all fairness, that's because of my clients. Um, I, I thank them so much because if I could be in here now and this could be brilliant, if I had no one walk through that door, my kids wouldn't be getting fed. You, you know what I mean? My clients from day one made me busy and made me who I am. And I give them a good service in return. I give them a good service, they come back every two or three weeks. Um, and I, lucky for me, I have a really good relationship with a lot of my customers. And I can keep up to date on my online system. Like my online booking system now, I have 500 people signed up to it within the first 10 weeks. And they're 500 customers who book in on a weekly, two weekly basis. So I'm, I'm busy now and I get people message me on, on Facebook or on my phone. You, you're fully booked, please fit me in. And you're like, like 95% of the time, I'm like, oh, do you know what, coming off to work, I'll cut you. Because I don't want to lose out that relationship with your customer, because, you know, they help me, so in return, I have to help them. So at the beginning, you've got to bend over backwards. Of course you have, of course you have. You work, you work, you work eight days a week, you know, because that's what you do. And yeah, I go home and I'm absolutely knackered, but it works. It, it, it works at the minute. It really works really well. Okay. Kieran, thank you very much for this interview. My thank pleasure. you for sharing all your new finds in products. Thank you for sharing your knowledge on how you procured this because you've got predominantly a young following base. These guys are in positions where you were a year ago. Yeah. You've given us a few nuggets how they can actually leave their current situation if they follow three, four, five simple principles that you've yep. just uh, disclosed there. So I salute you, go on to do many good things and I wish you the very best of luck in Thank your you, shop, Always in your future and your success. So there you go. Thank, Thank you, you very much.